Hey everyone, your eyes do not deceive you. We are back in the kitchen, but it's not for a full restoration this time. In the run-up to getting ready to do Thundercats Redux with Lyo Convoy, Lyo was kind enough to send me a gift that was for part two. As you know, our retrospectives are classically part one is the cartoon, part two is the toys. And he knew that I was missing a major vehicle from the LJN Thundercats line. And so he sent me one warning me it was gonna need a little TLC. And we have it right here, and it's not a restoration, it's more of a had to acquire some parts, gotta, you know, just make it look presentable. So we're calling it a rebuild, but I wanted to take you on this journey as a kind of prologue to Thundercats Redux. It is a rebuild and freshening up of the Thundercats Mutant Fist Pounder. <laughs> Fist Pounder, a new and evil force to challenge the Thunder Tank. This is the second wave LJN Thundercats Mutant Fist Pounder tank. This was from, I believe, 1986. And this one is, from what Lyo sent me, pretty much intact, except for the fact that I had to replace a few pieces. So, for example, there's a seat that sits up here at the top of the tank. Uh, this seat that came with the example that Lyo provided, he told me in advance, the seat belt on it is broken, um, it's a little discolored, uh, it, it's, it's not ideal for uh, an example that would be on camera. But I was able to find another seat with an intact seat belt. So I have that ready to go, I just have to swap out these cannons and then get it mounted onto the, uh, the top of the tank. Additionally, I have this uh, seat belt that I sourced, uh, or it might have, actually I think this seat belt came with the one Lyo sent me, if I recall. That's right. I had to find this seat belt, not this one. Um, this seat belt goes right here. It's more like a back belt to brace a figure inside this, this little area. And all the mechanics on this tank work just fine. So. It's going to require a little bit of an unorthodox cleaning method because this tank is covered in stickers. And I don't want to damage these stickers at all because they're still adhering to the tank quite well. So I'm going to do a very simple wipe down, a very careful, just terry cloth wipe down of this before I get started on anything else. But before I do the wipe down, I want to show you one more thing that we have to do. These holes right here uh, on the front of this tank. They are, aside from the seat belts, the indicator of the most often lost part on this tank. That is the dashboard control console. Now I have three of these right here that I'm gonna show you. All three of these uh, I sourced haphazardly from the internet, uh, from eBay, Mercari, other sources. And the first one I grabbed had one slot, it had one big, or not slot, but tab. And Lyo warned me, he said, there are different variations of the tank as far as the console is concerned. There are ones where you have one slot hole right here for the console to go in, then they revised it and they gave it two tabs for two slots. But as I was getting this group of parts together to do this, uh, this repair and rebuild, I happened across a third variation of this console, which has two half tabs and two black plastic snap clips. And Lyo himself had not even seen that variation before. So I just wanted to show you that there is a lot of restoration and parts repair pitfalls that can even happen with something as large and relatively, you know, simple as this tank. I say simple in the sense that you can see it, it's all there. It's not like a mask vehicle where everything is very small. Granted, there are, there are a lot of parts that make up this toy, but they're larger, they're chunkier, they're easy to get at. Uh, that's what I meant by uh, simplicity. So, 
first let's give this tank a wipe down, then we'll get to the chair, and then we'll do the final console because obviously this single, uh, single tab one is out. But between these two, I now have to determine which one I'm supposed to use. And I don't even know if it matters. Okay, well that wasn't fun, but uh, it never is, and thankfully at least it didn't involve peroxide or any kind of, in, you know, just time-intensive masking or anything like that. It was just a straight-up wipe down, but you want to get into all those nooks and crannies and get it looking as good as it can for the cameras. There are a few areas here where there's like marks on the paint, and I tried to get those off, but I don't want to get too abrasive with those because I don't want to take off original paint. And this very well could be a factory error, uh, as an example, on this, uh, this yellow square right here. This right here could be factory applied, you know, splash. Um, it doesn't appear to be, but it's not coming off, and I don't want to hurt that yellow panel. Now we can move on to actually getting this thing looking the way it should. So let's look at our chairs. We have two chairs here. Uh, we have the chair that I bought that has the intact seat belt, and then we have the chair that I need those cannons off of. Fortunately, they're just screwed on, uh, so I'm gonna pop those off. All right, so first things first, we need a Phillips head screwdriver to get these cannons off. These laser blasters, whatever you wanna call them. It's just a single Phillips head screw, and let's hope that everything goes easily. Seems pretty straightforward, so let's hope we're lucky enough on the next one. Okay, this is gonna pop out. And there it goes. And there it goes. All right, now you'll notice on these two cannons, we have these little fins uh, on the tops of the, or the outer edges of the barrels, the outer body of the barrels. This uh, complementing one does not have uh, a fin. One of the fins broke off. But for the purposes of the video work I'm gonna do, I, I tried to source a new one, but it's not, uh, it's not online right now, but I will keep looking. But in the meantime, it'll be fine for the purposes of the video itself. Now that we've gotten the cannons off the old seat, let's get the new seat with the cannons on the tank. Now the old seat had its mounting bracket already attached. So clearly the person who removed this removed the bracket alongside uh, the rest of the seat. This tank, uh, you know, thankfully still has its bracket mounted. So rather than stress these tabs, what I'm going to do is take this new chair that I've got and install it while it's still on the tank. And it's pretty straightforward. Now these cannons, you want to make sure that what's facing forward and on top is this back part. So this back part of the cannon is on top and the serrated edge is on the bottom when it's facing forward. So it would be like this, if that makes any sense. And I want to make sure that these are properly aligned before I turn the screws on them, so to speak. From everything I can tell, this is the position of the guns. And it seems a little weird to me, but anything else, any other position just looks strange. So let's put these back in. Remember, with plastic toys, never 
over tighten the screw right as it gets snug you're done Like I said, eventually I will get another cannon for this side that has an unbroken uh, uh, sort of decorative fin on the front, that spike. But in the meantime, we're in good shape. All right, now, uh, the next thing we're going to do, if I can, it's another thing you want to make sure of is that you haven't, okay, there we go. Didn't want to screw these down so tightly that it couldn't rotate. Okay, there we go. All right, now, as a matter of fact, I might even back off that one screw just a hair. That's a little better. All right. The next uh, addition to this tank is pretty easy. It's this seat belt or back belt. Uh, there are two kind of uh, stud pieces that are part of these fins. They're integrated into the fins. I would imagine that these could be snapped off if the toy was overly abused. Fortunately, ours still has them both. And I'm gonna put this kind of uh, relief toward the outside where you can see it. And I'm just going to take this belt and Put it across. I'm going to leave it, I don't want to stretch it too much, so I'm going to leave it on the outside notches because I have a feeling that slide is supposed to go in here anyway. All right. So there is our back belt installed, and now the last piece is that pesky console. Now, to look into this console and make the decision, Obviously, we can't use the one with the single tab, so that one's out. So of the two that have dual tabs, one with these clips, one not, the sticker on the normal, uh, the known uh, dual tab console is not faded. It's in better shape. So we're going to go with this and hope that that works, and then we can save this one for posterity. Might even send this one off to Lyo Convoy for his collection. Okay, here goes. Two tabs. Two slots. Ah, voila, there we go. And that is a complete Thundercats mutant fist pounder. And he might have if I hadn't stepped in. Um, yes! Well, we are one step closer now to commencing on the production of Thundercats Redux that I will be doing with Lyo Convoy, a two-part re-retrospective on the Thundercats, which I will be doing here in the next few months. This is a beautiful piece. I'm so glad to see it finally complete. I can't thank Lyo Convoy enough for sending me the donor upon which to build this complete example. I think it looks great. I will be sourcing another cannon at some point in the future, but for now, it really does look great and it works well. Like, it, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I couldn't be more grateful to my friend Lyo for sending this to me. It's gonna make a great addition to the final video. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have enjoyed a little video back in the kitchen doing a sort of restoration with retroblasting. So thanks for watching this and I'll see you on the next video.